here for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and ranking member, members of the committee, and of course, gentlemen on the panel, thank you for your time today. I wanna to take this opportunity at the start of this Congress and this committee's first hearing to say how honored I am to serve on this committee and to join in the oversight of this committee's work. As a New Mexican and as an American, I am deeply proud to serve our country and to serve our communities and to serve under the leadership of our ranking member in particular, Mr. Jamie Raskin, who is a hero and a scholar here in the House. Our job on this committee is to defend our democracy and our basic institutions, to protect our rights as Americans and as a member of the Truth Squad on this side of the aisle, to hold our government accountable and counter the lies, conspiracy theories, and extremism that we're going to hear on this committee, this Congress. In a couple of words, we're here to fight for the American people and for the people of New Mexico, which is where I was born and raised. And in fact, I'm grateful for this discussion today because as a native New Mexican and as somebody who grew up in a working family that struggled to make ends meet with a single mother, I personally know what it means to live on the edge and why critical relief programs like the programs that we're talking about here today in this committee were passed by this body to help millions of Americans who would have fallen through the cracks as we saw in previous economic disruptions. In fact, the early relief programs, whether that's the insurance, the PPP program, the subsequent American Recovery Plan literally saved lives. Let me say that again. These programs saved lives. In fact, in New Mexico, almost 93,000 New Mexicans received unemployment insurance. When the pandemic began, I was serving in the state legislature. We called thousands of New Mexicans in my district to find out how they were doing welfare checks. Elders who were stranded in their homes without access to health care. People whose family members had died. People who were unable to get food and water, especially in our rural and tribal communities. These programs were designed to save lives and to keep individuals from falling into the free fall of economic disaster during a pandemic. We know there was fraud and abuse. There is fraud and abuse wherever there are humans who take advantage of systems that do not have proper oversight. I know a lot about oversight. I used to work in the Office of Management and Budget in this government. I was a Senate staffer. I conducted financial oversight. I know what that looks like. And I have never seen more financial fraud and abuse of the system than I saw in the previous administration under Donald Trump in which financial systems were abused, including by his cronies and fraudsters who were involved in his administration and his friends across the country. And our job, is to make sure that they are held accountable and that we are looking out for the people in our communities. So let's get the story straight. I know, gentlemen, you've been here a long time today, many, many hours. I know you're ready probably to go take a break and rest, and we thank you for your time this morning, for serving our country and the roles that you all play uh, in doing that oversight. But I, I wanna just ask a couple of few questions to clarify what is going on. So Mr. Dorado, I know you've talked a lot this morning and probably answered this question in multiple ways, but I wanna be very specific. Can you tell us how many convictions and guilty pleas have come from federal charges regarding fraud with these COVID relief programs? Uh, yes. Uh, so far, according to the Department of Justice system, there have been over a thousand people who have either pled guilty or uh, have been convicted. There's another 600 people uh, where charges are pending. There are hundreds of investigations underway now Thank and will we'll be done. Of the thousand people who have been uh, guilty or... or uh, Thank you, Mr. Uh, yeah, Dodoro. Uh, I want to just clarify, so we're talking less than 2,000 people, and we're talking about millions of Americans whose lives were impacted by these programs. 
93,000 New Mexicans and less than 3,000 cases of fraud and abuse. Now, we need to hold those who committed crimes accountable, and that's exactly what we're going to do on this committee through the oversight of our federal programs who are uh, tasked with that role the, and our law enforcement and our court system. But our time. job is to make sure that the American people are represented and we keep this government accountable. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The chair